Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Dan Connor, and this is the Aquarium Insider Podcast, where we talk about all things aquariums and helping new Aquarius kind of set up things in a hobby, and as well as some cool interviews I'm doing. So stay tuned for that kind of stuff. So today's podcast is going to be all about filtration for beginners. So these are gonna we're gonna cover the the main types of filtration you're gonna find in your aquariums, which one you think works best, and what might work best for your situation. So let's just kind of dive right in. So for filtration, you know, what am I talking about? What is an aquarium filter? And I am going to break it down into the very basics. So aquarium filter, in my personal opinion, is just a device that removes stuff out of the water that you can see and stuff that you can't see that's detrimental to the fish's health, right? So to not get into an uber detail of the nitrogen cycle, which we will talk about here in a minute, but... So when you're looking for an aquarium filter for your tank, there are some basic things you should look for. So what are those things? So the way I look at it is your aquarium filter, when you're looking for them, should have two main components. And that is a mechanical filter and a biological filter. Those are the two minimums you should have in your aquarium. So what are those? So let's kind of break those down real quick. So a mechanical filter is a filter that removes stuff out of the water that you typically can see. So this could be excess food, detritus, waste, poop, whatever you want to call it. Maybe in, even down to like some food finds, you're probably not going to see as much. But physical stuff, right? It's removing that out of the water. It's making the water cleaner that way. And a biological filter is essentially a filter that has good bacteria built up on it, hopefully. That is removing the waste from the fish, aka the ammonia, out of the water, and it's breaking it down into different substances that be, that are less toxic over time. And here's what I mean by that. And I'm not going to do a whole video, you know, spiel about the nitrogen cycle, but a real quick rundown of how it works. Your good bacteria breaks down ammonia into nitrite, which is still toxic to fish, and then converts nitrite into nitrate. And nitrate is where you want to have it as best you can because nitrate isn't toxic to fish unless it's in really high amounts. And you can remove it a few different ways. Typically, you can remove it with a chemical filter, which we'll talk about in a minute. You can remove it with having extra plants in your tank because they'll use it as a food source. Or you can remove it with a water change. So having your, your biological filter set is going to establish a is going to stop your water quality parameters in your tank from really fluctuating a whole lot. So I like to have my filter built up with a good biological filter as well. Now, you're going to have a natural biofilter in your tank and in your substrate that's going to help with this as well. But I like to have it in my filter as much as I can. And then my last, you know, this isn't a requirement for your filter, but I really think it's a good added benefit if you can have it in your filtration. And that's a chemical filter. And it's my last step as far as the filtration process goes. So adding a chemical filter to your tank, which is basically carbon and zeolite, zeocarb, different things that are going to remove and help to toxify ammonia in case you have a spike. And then also either it does that or maybe you're using it as a like a resin filter to help polish the water, you know, take out any other organics that might be in the tank to help prevent algae growth, things like that. I think are super helpful in just maintaining the aquarium. It's not required by any means, but I think it makes your life easier. And if you don't know this already, I'm all about trying to save money, time, and stress as much as I possibly can. So for me, I like to have all levels, all three levels of filtration in my aquariums at home. Um, don't look at the aquariums behind me. This is a retail setup, not my home aquariums. We have 97 fish tanks in this room. So we obviously run a different type of filter for those, which we'll talk about in a minute. It might be useful in your situation. So we got the three kinds of filtration knocked out. We got mechanical, uh, biological, and chemical if you want to, right? So what kind of filters are out there for your aquarium? And we're going to talk about a few kinds and kind of break down the pros and cons of each. If that makes sense. So... You have your hang on back filters, which are very common, probably most common filter out there, I think, that most people use because it comes with most of your aquarium kits. You've got an internal filter, and then you've got a sponge filter. 
And I think those are the three main most people run into at some level and should be run into. Now there's other ones you you can we can talk about that aren't I'm not mentioning because those are separate. One's an under gravel filter, and the other is a canister filter. And canisters, we'll talk about those in a separate podcast because I think they're a little bit more advanced. Those are bigger tanks. They have everything typically already contained. It's not really something you have to modify it at all, really, unless you wanted to. So we're talking about some other filtration that are a little bit more common, a little bit more medium-sized tanks that people run these uh, filters for. And then there's a lot of different varieties as far as quality and pricing. And I wanted to really touch on that because that matters a lot, especially to newer hobbyists, I think. So let's kind of break down the pros and cons of each. So let's kind of go ahead and start with the hang on back. So what are some of the pros and cons to having a hang on back filter? So, you know, pros for setting up a hang on back is one, it's relatively easy. There's not a whole lot of components to them. It's usually the stem that's leading back to the tank where it's your intake, your intake line that's going to hook into it and do the pump head and it's going to, that's the pipe that's going to suck water out. And then you have to put your filtration cartridges in and make sure your power cords out of the filter. Relatively easy to set up. Then they also have, um, you know, they're relatively, in, sorry, they're relatively inexpensive. They do come in a wide range, and I think the price goes up with the better quality build. So you can get them as cheap as, you know, depending on the size. I mean, it's going to vary based on tank size, but you can get them relatively inexpensive. And they come with at least some filtration that you can add that are that's in the tank, and in the, you know, some come with all the bells and whistles. Some do not. And we'll talk about those here in a few. So easy to set up, relatively inexpensive. And they all come with the ability to carry all my favorite types of filtration, right? They all have the ability to carry a biofilter, a mechanical filter, and a chemical filter. No matter which one you have, you just some come with it already, some you have to um, modify, right? So it just depends on the filter. And another big big thing I like them is they're relatively hidden. You don't see them in your aquarium as much. It's basically just one intake tube coming down and that's, that's really all you see. So I think it's a nice setup if you're trying to keep a real clean tank where you don't see any of the extra cords and stuff like that. Right. Cons to hanging out cons to some of these filters. Um, you know, some are better than others, just like with everything in life. So you, you pay less money, you might not get as much in a filter. So there's that aspect of it. Um, uh, one aspect of them that it depends on the filter. Some are better than these than others, right? But if you do a lot of really small fish and the intake holes are too big, you might end up sucking fish in there and, you know, might lose a few or worst case scenario, slow moving fish get stuck to it and they just die because they're stuck and they can't get off the filter. So hopefully you catch that, but something else to consider when looking at the type of filter. And then this will go with basically every filter, but if you have a ton of fish and you're overstocking the tank and whatever that's going to mean to you is, you're going to have to do a lot more maintenance on the filter, making sure your filter pads and filter media has been kept up, where it, kept up with more frequently. So just something to think about when you're doing it. All right, let's talk about internal filters. So what are some of the pros and cons for keeping internal filters? Well, one, they're relatively small and they're inexpensive, just like your hang on backs. So a good price point for entry-level aquariums, especially on the smaller side of aquariums, right? Five, 10 gallons, 20 gallons even maybe, um, something like that. And they're quiet. They're not super loud filters. You know, sometimes air pump, you are on sponge, might be a little too loud. Sometimes your hang on back might be a little noisy. These are super quiet filters, not a lot of issues with them um, as far as, you know, their loudness or setup goes and they're still easy to set up just like hang on backs relatively easy to do all your cartridges go in at the same spot and um just easy to use so some cons to these is they're generally not their bay for holding media of any kind or cartridges aren't super big so for me if i was going to run those i make sure i'd ran a, a bigger one on a smaller tank i just don't think their bays are big enough to really hold enough filter media or filter pads in order to um work and run effectively so if you're going to keep them i would make sure your tank's definitely not overstocked by any imagination i'd definitely make sure it's understocked for that and then just something to think of for that and then two 
they are going to be inside your aquarium. So on those smaller tanks, they're going to take, take up a considerable amount of space in the corner. And if you don't like that look, they're probably not going to be, uh, it's probably not going to be for you, right? One thing, if you do like, don't mind that, or you do want to run them on bigger aquariums, I know a lot of people like running them as a secondary filter or like a polishing type filter. So they might buy them and just replace their whole inside with some sort of like fine mesh polyfill or fine, really fine um, particle collector, you know, just to help keep their tank that cleaner, you know, that much more clean. So I don't know if I like them as a, as a standalone filter other than on some smaller aquariums. But as a secondary filter, I think they're great for that sort of aspect. So even if you don't want to run them on your main aquarium, running them on a secondary would still be pretty cool. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons to sponge filters. So if you want to run more than a few tanks, sponge is a good option. In the sponge itself, there's no mechanical parts, right? You just got typically your sponge, whatever holder it's going to sit on some sort of little extension tube and then your airline tubing that plugs in from there to your air pump. And that's what powers the filter. So inexpensive again to run, it holds both of your main components for filtering. So it's got a mechanical and a biological filter right there, right? It pulls water through the sponge and then it, um, cleans the water and provides that bio filter depending on how might you know microscope the holes are in there and it comes in different coarseness so if you run a you know it depends on what you know how many fish you run in the tank it comes in different coarse levels so you can get a coarse filter if you don't feel like there's much issues up to like a real fine filter just remember the finer you get it the more fast those holes will clog up so just be careful and make sure you're maintaining a good environment and clean it properly and at least more often right so those are some pros to that. Cons to the uh, sponge is obviously you have to have a second component. You've got to have an air pump that runs it. So air pump is what pump runs the whole thing. But you only really need, you know, one. If you're going to run multiple sponges, make sure it's rated for that and they've got extra inlets and stuff. You could probably split them if you wanted to most of the time. And like I just mentioned, if you plan on running a lot of fish in these aquariums, just plan on you might have to clean the sponge a little bit more often now it's relatively easy to do you just disconnect it from the little little point at the top of the sponge and then squeeze it out hopefully in some tank water not some chlorinated water right not trying to kill off all that back bacteria all your good bacteria but i don't think it's going to kill all of it off i think there's you know i don't think it's likely to kill all of it off but you know just to be safe use some tank water squeeze it out one thing to mention though when you are doing maintenance and you are cleaning these sponge filters Clean it out as best as you can and make sure you get all the stuff is, you know, ringing clean as best you can. When you put it back in, you're likely still have a little bit of remnants you couldn't get to, depending on how heavily stocked the tank was. Just so that's probably normal and it's going to maybe provide a little cloud of, you know, some brown, icky stuff uh, coming back up. Just know it'll go away in just a few, you know, minutes, hours, depending on how bad it is. But just expect that to be there as well. So if I was setting up a tank today, a new tank, what type of filter would I choose? I'm not going to give you a straight answer because it doesn't, it doesn't work that way, but I would kind of see the situation I'm in and what I plan on doing. And the main thing is, is do I plan on running just a handful, like a few tanks, like maybe up to three, or do I plan on running multiple tanks? That's the first question I would ask myself. If I'm going to run a lot more of multiple tanks, I would, I would definitely run sponge filter for those from purely a cost perspective those um sponge filters are super economical you can get an air pump that can run all of your tanks at once just you know getting one big enough to run all of them is going to be you know the thing to think about right and they're easy to replace they're easy to clean it, it, there's no you know electrical bill to speak of outside of you know for you know running three hang on backs and running those it's gonna the cost will add up over time if you're gonna run hang on backs. so for me if I'm running multiple tanks and you got multiple tank syndrome, you got to be running sponge, I think. I think it's just a good thing to do. Now, if I plan on only running a few tanks, maybe up to three tanks or so, I, I personally like hang on backs. They're my next favorite, and that's purely for an ease of use and, and less maintenance. You got some pretty, and I like to overpower my filtration just so we're clear. Um, if I use hang on backs and I run tanks and I'm going to run it heavily stocked, I'll throw a, a few hang on backs on there. I don't care. Um, 
just to make sure I have enough filtration to where the tank will not be overcrowded or at least not look where the water quality parameters are going to be fluctuating due to, and, you know, if I add food or too much food or something's going to have like that, I just double up the filtration if I feel like I'm concerned for it, right? But for the most part, hang on back is where I would go 99% of the time. So depending on my situation, I'll use one of those two tanks. Now, the situation I'd use a nano tank, in my personal preference, I might use them on a on a 10 gallon or under tank if I had it laying around. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go out and buy an internal um, filter. Now, I do see there's some new ones on the market. I haven't tested all of them. I've used quite a few of them in the past. So if you're a brand out there that's want me to test a few of them, I'd love to try some different things out. But for the most part, I'm just not a huge internal filter guy for most of my aquariums as a primary filter. As a secondary filter, for sure, just not a primary. All right, so now let's let's kind of dive this conversation into hang on backs because this is something we get asked a lot, a lot, and it's one of the more common filters. And we'll talk about hang on backs and cartridges specifically. So most, I won't say most, but a lot of your hang on back filters in the market today will come in with these cartridges. And the cartridges are the all in casing of everything. They're, they filter, they are the end all be all for your filters, right? They have the filter floss typically and some type of chemical filter in your aquarium, right? So let's think about this from what I said earlier. Earlier I mentioned I, I have two main requirements for your filter. It's got to have a mechanical filter and it's got to have a biological filter. So these hang on backs, and I'll name a few brands out there that I can think off the top of my head. I think Topfin, Aquion, uh, Marine Land are probably the, the most popular ones out there, right? They all come with filter cartridges of some kind. They have a little mesh pad, you know, of different coarsenesses. They've got some carbon in there, filter, you know, as a chemical filter, and that's what you're putting in there. And they make different sizes, and they can put multiple cartridges in there, and all that's well and good. And do I, you know, the question is, do I think they're okay? Yes, depending on what you're doing with the aquarium. So I don't particularly like just the cartridges because one it's an added recurring cost you're adding monthly and you're depending on that filter to filter your whole aquarium if you stock that tank roughly like you know to its max or you're going to try to stock it as close as you can to what you're considering its max when you remove that filter and replace new ones replace it with a new one you are going to create swings in your tank because what's happened is your carbon in your tank has now become both the biological and the chemical because there are going to be bacteria growing on that, right? And it's going to be acting as both. So if you remove it from the aquarium, yes, you'll still have biological filter in your tank because you have substrate and stuff. But when it becomes, when the bio load becomes too much, your swing is much likely to be bigger. And this could be swings in ammonia, swings in nitrate, possibly pH, depending on it, right? Um, so, as a preference, that's one reason I don't like cartridges. Now, you can take those same filters and be like, well, I have a Aquan, I have a Marine Land or something like that. I don't think they're bad filters. I think they're fine. I just think when you try to overstock them, I don't know if they're the best. Now, there's a couple ways you can get around that, right? Let's say you don't want to add anything else to it and you've got a penguin. Here's a good way to deal with it. You have multiple filter bays, right? And you don't care about making your own filter and stuff like that. Try replacing them not all at the same time and maybe doing them one at a time. You could take, if you got four cartridges, take one out, replace one. The next week, you maybe just change out one a week, something like that. That would probably be a good way to get around any sort of big swings in your tank if you had a huge bio load. If you don't have a lot of fish in the tank, I don't think you're going to see much of a change. So maybe, depending on if your fish produces a lot of waste and it's maybe bigger. You know, I can't speak to every single situation. But I can tell you, generally speaking, if you don't have it overstocked or at least, you know, you know, if it's appropriately stocked, I don't know. It's, it's going to depend a lot on your species, right? So consider at least adding more cartridges so where you can rotate out less at a time. So you're not doing all four. You'll do like one at a time and switch them out. That might be a little way to ease the swings of your tank, which you could cause, could or could not cause problems. You know, not every fish is kind of the same tolerance to water quality. Some are super hardy, some are not. 
So it's just something to consider when you're looking at and trying to deal with your filter, right? So, so what are some ways you can maybe make these other hang on backs a little bit more effective and increase their overall filtration capacity? And the easiest way I would say that is by adding a biomedia bag. So even Marineland sells those, you know, ceramic rings you can add to your tank. Adding them with a mesh bag, I think, would be really nice to add that biofilter because it's never going to really get changed. You might need to wash it off in some tank water, right, um, if it gets too dirty or something. But that's a good base for your biofilter without really increasing the price of the filter very much. And that's a very easy, simple fix. So you can also – there's a, a couple of things you can do. You can add a uh, – pre-filter by putting those little sponges on the on the side of the intake right that also helps trap a lot of the trash before it even gets to your filter which is even more helpful to increasing the longevity of these filter pads or filter cartridges however you want to say it so that's a couple ideas on making those filters more uh making them better making them better at what they do now are there hang on backs uh that do all of it at the time, and I guess we'll kind of segue into that is to what are some of my favorite hang on backs at the moment, you know, favorite brands out there. So I'm a big fan of all, you know, the hang on backs that are going to have all my filtering components I like. They have a mechanical, they've got a bio, and at least a chemical filter, or at least the ability to have a chemical filter, right? So the two that really come to mind is going to be the Aqua Clear hang on backs and then the titles by Seachem and Sichi. So those are the title with, by the way, and I'll go to both of them here in a second. They both have both types of filtration. They have great size bays, which is the area you can put the, you know, your filter pads and media and stuff like that. Great size. And both of them have a few features that are different than the other. And one kind of stands above the other one. So let's talk about the aqua clear real quick. They, the water comes in from the bottom and then the water will go through your different levels of, of filter pads. So essentially you have your um, filter pads at the bottom, you've got your filter, your biomedia in the middle, and you've got some type of chemical filter at the top is how I like to, is how I like to do it. You know, there's a couple ways you can set up your filter, but I like to get the way I foresee it in my head is a few things. One, when you're setting up these, these hang on backs already have all their filter pads and stuff in them, wherever the water is coming in, you want to put the filter pads first. And if you have multiple ones, you pick your coarseness one first, and then your finer one second is a good way to put it. And then after that, I put my bio filter, my bio bag of media. And here's the main reason you want to do that. Think about it in terms of what makes your bio bag media work efficiently. So Everything is related to surface area. How much surface area does those bio rings or whatever you have in there have space-wise for good bacteria to grow on? They all have different ridges and edges, and they're a little bit rough, so they have all these different edges, right? If you have that bag first and all of that trash and poop and algae, whatever it is, gets stuck on those bio rings, it's going to make them slick and less space for them to grow on. So I personally like to keep that bag as clean as possible, you know, in the tank and filter all that ahead of time. So it maximizes the amount of surface area the good bacteria have to grow on, right? And then after the biofiltration, I love to put the chemical filter if you're going to put one. Now I'll put one because I enjoy it or I, I think it's good and it's less maintenance for me. And I've tried a few different ones for a few different reasons. If you think you're going to have an issue with a with fluctuation of water quality parameters, I like to run carbon or some sort of media that's going to help filter out and detoxify your ammonia. Probably there's a few other ones out there that are better at it than that. But if you're going to if you're doing it because you're worried about detox uh, ammonia swings and stuff like that because your tank's fully stocked get one of those media bags that come with the ability to detoxify it there's a few out there that can do it now and then another one i've been running lately and it's mostly to deal with organics and stuff like that that might cause some algae in the tanks and that's the purigen packs from sea Kim. it's just been a good little resin filter i've added as my last little stage before the water goes out in the tank to help remove anything else that maybe nothing else did catch. And I just use the 100 mil 
bags. You can certainly buy your own bags and make your own because it comes in a little container if you want to, but I just buy the bags because it's easier and I ain't got to deal with anything else. So a couple ideas on some different filtration uh, kinds, some of my favorites right now. And all the way, these are just preferences of mine. My opinion is just my opinion. These are just filters that I like and why I enjoy them. And I try to give a little insight as to why I pick them. So those filters are interested in, great. Go look for those at your local store. Um, we don't really carry filters at the moment, but if you're, you have questions about where to find them, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I'm sure I can find somebody that's got those filters for you. And uh, that's it. So those are some of your basics to deal with aquarium filtration. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you've got questions about filters, you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. What should I get for this type of a tank? This is the kind of tank I'm setting up. Leave me a comment in uh, below and I'd love to answer them and try to answer as many as I can. So please leave me those questions, comments, let me know what you thought. And I guess that's it. So had fun, had a blast. Hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it. If you liked it, I love you if you uh, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, let me know what you want to see next, what kind of videos you want me to do, or even better, what kind of filters do you guys run in your tanks? Have you seen any issues? I'd love to start a little conversation at the bottom of this video. If you've had issues, maybe share that with the group, and so maybe some newer fish keepers won't make that same mistake. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.